friends i am mohammad babar and today we are going to discuss the top 10 .net code refactoring techniques uh, that generally ask in every interviews in the different ways so i covered the top 10 questions like uh, all the things uh, that uh, we need in the uh, .net code refactoring so let's start with the first question uh that is uh, the some common code smells in dotnet application that you know indicate the uh, need for refactoring so there are different uh, you know uh, common uh, code smells like uh, if we have a uh, long methods in our in our code like methods that are too long and perform too many tasks um, that, so they can be hard to uh, understand and maintain so uh, the next one is the large classes like classes with too many responsibilities uh, violate the single responsibility principle and can become uh, you know difficult to manage so uh we can also you know uh, duplication in our code like uh, repeated code fragments uh, scattered across the code base increase uh, maintenance efforts and the uh, risk of introducing bugs so we have also you know excessive use of uh, primitive data types like using strings uh, for representing dates instead of creating custom types uh, so that you know leads to code duplication and uh, makes the code less expressive so we have also a god objects like uh, classes that uh no or do too much like uh, becoming overly uh, uh, complex and tightly coupled with other classes so we have also you know excessive or outdated comments uh, that can you know indicate that the code uh, a code is not uh, self explanatory and needs refactoring to improve clarity so these are some uh, code smells that we generally in our code so let's uh, you know uh, discuss the some strategies and best practices for refactoring large methods and classes in dotnet so we have you know uh, the one, first thing is uh, analyze the large method or class to understand what it does okay so break it down into smaller logical units based on the responsibilities each part has okay so by using you know solid principle uh, it will be you know more easier to identify any responsibility so i have made a, a complete video on the solid principles you can watch this video uh, for getting all the knowledge about the solid principles so the next one is uh, we, we you know identify repeated or complex logic uh, within the large method and extract it into separate methods uh, with descriptive name so uh this improves uh, readability and promotes code reuse we can also you know in uh, encapsulate uh, related data and behavior within the class uh, so we have to use you know properties and methods to expose only the necessary functionality uh, to uh, other parts of the code uh, we can also you know apply common design patterns like factory strategy observer patterns etc uh, like so these patterns uh, uh, provide you know proven solutions to recurring uh, design problems and make your code more flexible and maintainable so the last one the most important one is the unit testing so write unit test for uh, your refactored code to ensure that it behaves as expected so you can also use the test driven uh, development that you know can help guide your uh, refactoring process and ensure uh, your code remains functional after changes so let's discuss some strategies that can be you know employed to refactor legacy dotnet code uh, without breaking existing functionality so uh, we you know can also create a test suite like uh, uh, develop a comprehensive uh, set of unit test and integration test that cover the existing functionality so these tests will you know act as a safety uh okay uh, okay so we can also you know apply the manual testing uh, uh, like uh, automated test uh, with manual testing to catch any edge cases or user you know interface uh, issues that automated test might uh, so so that can might you know miss so uh, we have also you know incremental refactoring like uh, uh, make small incremental changes uh, rather than large uh, sweeping ones so this reduce the risk of you know introducing bugs we can also you know commit uh, or changes frequently to a version control system to ensure uh, that uh, we can easily you know revert if something 
goes wrong so we can also use refactoring patterns like break down large methods into smaller more manageable ones and we can also move related methods and properties into new classes to reduce the size of uh, our lay large classes we can also uh, you know uh, improve readability by using meaningful uh, names of constants uh, we can also uh, simplify uh, complex uh, conditional statements by using polymorphism and uh, if we, we have a leverage design principle like uh, uh, we, we should also apply solid principles to improve code structure and flexibility uh, we can also you know uh, apply a dry principle like uh, eliminate duplicate code by uh, creating reusable methods of classes we can also you know uh, make our uh, classes keep it simple stupid like strive for uh, simplicity in your uh, code refactoring efforts so uh, these are some steps like uh, we can also uh, utilize modern uh, .NET features like uh, we can take advantage for C sharp language features such as link queries we can also uh, use async await and uh, pattern matching to simplify and modernize our code so we can uh, there are lots of you know libraries there we can replace outdated libraries with modern equivalents to improve performance and maintainability <coughs> we can uh, also use branching <coughs> strategies to isolate uh, refactoring changes and we can also merge changes back into the main branch only after thorough testing uh, we can also you know use pull requests to review and discuss changes before they are integrated into the uh, main code base we can also automate uh, our you know continuous in integration or uh, continuous development ci cd pipelines we can also set up ci uh, pipeline to automatically <coughs> run tests on every commit uh, this ensures uh, that refactoring changes do not break existing functionality so we can also you know uh, use cd pipelines to automate uh, deployment and rollback uh, processes reducing the risk of downtime due to refactoring changes so uh, the uh, like uh, we can also update comments and uh, documentation to reflect refactoring changes uh, like uh, we can also keep the team informed about refactoring efforts to ensure everyone understands the changes and their impact so <clears throat> the next uh, most important one the, that are the what are the you know primary goals of code refactoring in dotnet so we have different goals like uh, <clears throat> we can also uh, uh, call, call like first is the readability so refactoring makes the code easier to understand for developers uh, which you know helps uh, in maintaining and debugging it in uh, in the future like this includes renaming variables methods and classes to better ref uh, reflect their purpose so if you see in the example like before refactoring it uh, 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 they are using like int a is equal to 10 int b is equal to 20 like so these are uh, not a very vari variables name okay uh, these, are, these are hard to understand like uh, if uh, we uh, I refactor them so I uh, will use the meaningful names like int first number in second number if uh, we, uh, we want to calculate the sum so these are you know the steps little steps that uh, make uh, you know code readable so uh, when we talk about the maintainability so refactoring simplifies <coughs> complex code structures and eliminates uh, redundancy uh, making it easier to modify and extend the code base without uh, introducing like so when we uh, check the example uh, below so uh, if you see that we have put a, uh, put the condition in the if uh, block so if uh, there is a, a large condition like condition 1 and uh, and and condition 2 and condition 3 so we should also you know uh, make uh, like these type of conditions in a separate method uh, for you know better maintainability so it's a good practice to to make a separate method like this uh, after refactoring i have used like all conditional uh, met statement in this method so uh, this is the a good practice for that so uh, when we talk about the performance optimization so refactoring can lead to more efficient code that executes faster uh, reducing so uh, like uh, resource consumption and improving application uh, performance so in the performance optimization like uh, before we are using the simple for loop in which we are accessing that array 
like a whole array with uh, you know its uh, uh, index but uh, after refactoring we just use the for each loop that is specifically for that list or a large number of data or a different amount of so in which we can directly access the uh, that item so these are some steps for uh, performance optimization so let's uh, talk about some uh, dependencies that uh, we have to handle during the refactoring of the dotnet application so uh, let's uh, first understand that uh, you know create a uh, you should have to create a visual map of all existing dependencies in your code uh, to see how everything is uh, so connected like uh, and you know uh, uh, identify uh, critical dependencies and understand which part of the code rely heavily on each other so uh, first of all that uh, you have to you know uh, uh, like uh, decouple and inject uh, your uh, dependency injection you know to make your code more flexible and easier to manage so you should also use dependency injection uh, for uh, you know making your code flexible and easier so this means lag like uh, passing you know dependencies like services or components into your classes instead of having uh, them create their own so uh, for this uh, you have to use interfaces or abstract classes to create a layer of abstraction uh, like making it easier to change the underlying implementation uh, without affecting other parts of the code so uh, you can also you know make changes in small manageable steps rather than all at once to reduce the risk of errors uh, so you have uh, you can also write and you know run tests before and after each change to ensure uh, nothing breaks so uh, automated just help uh, to you know catch issues early so you can also you know collaborate and you can also uh, make a stru uh, like a structured document as well so these are you know some steps too uh, so now now let's move to the next like uh, how can you ensure that a refactored code remains performant uh, in dotnet application so you uh, like uh, I, I, tell, I tell before like unit test to cover critical functionalities you can also uh, use the profiling tools like uh, dot trace can you know pinpoint performance bottlenecks uh, in in that tool you can you know uh, if refactoring a data access layer so uh, dot trace can highlight light in you know efficient database queries you can also utilize the async await for you know asynchronous operations you can also optimize your link queries for efficiency like you can also properly use the you know eager loading and lazy loading uh, uh, so you can also use the projection uh, with the link queries where properly you can also you know employ caching mechanism uh, when refactoring a web application you know cache frequently access the data to reduce database round trips so we can also uh, manage our uh, memory allocations like in uh, refactoring a memory uh, you know intensive component reduce object creation to prevent unnecessary garbage collection over it so uh, continuous monitoring ensures that performance remains optimal uh, post refactoring so uh, when refactoring a complex algorithm uh, you're also you know implementing the strategy pattern uh, that can allow for interchangeable like uh, algorithms without uh, sacrificing performance so these are some uh, code uh, remain performance like uh, we have also you know example here so in this example like uh, we can also you know uh, use uh, different uh, uh, kind of like uh, uh, swapping out you know different algorithms uh, we can also dynamically and ensure that performance is monitored and optimized continuously because all uh, like uh, we have used different uh, uh like uh, uh, filters here like uh, if uh, we have to start the uh, uh, stopwatch and then if we have to perform the sort then we have to stop the, that uh, again and then we you know uh, set the strategy for a new object creation like uh, we have also uh, started the restarted the stopwatch so uh, these we can use to optimize and monitor the uh, it continuously so uh, let's 
uh, move to the next like uh, how do you manage the database schema ch uh, changes when refactoring data access code in dotnet so uh, you can also you know maintain a robust version control system like git uh, to track uh, changes in the database schema alongside uh, code changes uh, you can also ensure a synchronized history for uh, easy rollback and collaboration so you can also implement automated migration scripts uh, using tools like entity framework or migration or you know uh, fluent uh, migrator to manage uh, schema changes seamlessly minimizing manual uh, intervention and errors so i have made a complete video on entity framework code as well you can watch that video for getting the uh, more knowledge about that so uh, you can also you know create a well documented and organized sql scripts for schema you know alterations uh, you can also store it in the code repository allowing developers to understand and uh, execute changes consistently across environments so uh, uh, it, you can also you know integrate database schema changes into ci cd pipelines to automate you know uh, testing and deployment processes uh, ensure uh, that uh, schema modifications are thoroughly validated before uh, reaching production so you can also you know establish rollback strategies to revert database changes uh, in case of errors or uh, unforeseen issues like uh, maintaining uh, data integrity and uh, minimizing downtime uh, during refactoring activities so uh, let's start the some uh, talk about the some strategies that can be employed to refactor and modernize uh, .NET applications that use outdated frameworks or library so we can you know gradually update update like uh, refactor and update uh, small parts of the application at the time uh, instead of doing complete our haul at uh, all at once okay so uh, we can also update outdated libraries and frameworks uh, gradually using package management tools like NuGet package uh, manager in the visual studio uh, uh, we can also uh, consider migrating from older dotnet framework versions to the latest dotnet core or dotnet 5 plus for benefits uh, like performance improvements and uh, cross platform support uh, we can also restructure and and improve old code uh, to adhere like uh, to modern uh, coding standards and best practices uh, we can also uh, use automated testing we can also continuous integration we can also monitor and uh, optimize like continuously monitor and optimize the performance of the modernized applications so uh, let's talk about some techniques that can be used to refactor and improve the readability of complex uh, conditional logic in dotnet like we can also break down our complex conditions into separate methods uh, with descriptive names so we can also use god clauses or early return to avoid deeply nesting uh, this is uh, the very best practices to you know use, use like we can also uh, assign inter uh, intermediate results uh, to meaningful variables so these are some uh, very very important uh, you know steps to uh, to basically improve the readability of complex conditional logic in dotnet so the last one is uh, uh, to share uh, some real world examples for successful code refactoring projects in dotnet like st stack overflow uh, over the years stack overflow has undergone several uh, code refactoring efforts to improve performance scalability uh, and maintain Sustainability. So they have uh, shared some insights into their refactoring journey, including migration to uh, .NET Core for better performance and modernization of legacy code. So .NET Core itself is, uh, you know, uh, like uh, uh, the framework uh, itself has, you know, undergone significant refactoring uh, since its inspection inception. So uh, basically, with each you know new release, the .NET team has uh, refactored and optimized various parts of the framework to improve performance uh, reduce dependencies and enhance developer productivity so this you know uh, ongoing refactoring effort has contributed uh, to the uh, widespread adoption of dotnet core for building modern applications across uh, different platforms so uh, that's the end of the video like uh, thanks a lot guys uh, for watching this video and uh, please uh, hit like and subscribe button to uh, and stay tuned with the uh, further and future updates like uh, we make you know interesting very interesting videos for you uh, for the interview purposes uh, so uh, thanks a lot guys